What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I want to answer the very simple question of is CSS really that hard? Because I feel like universally, software engineers just tend to find CSS difficult. Now, I don't have any concrete data on this, but actually, you know what? I'm going to post a poll on LinkedIn right now asking this very question. I'll link it in the comments below. We'll see how many people find it difficult and how many don't. My guess is it's probably going to be like 70% or more find it difficult. But I know that I did find it difficult. When I started developing, even when I had a few years of experience under my belt, I found CSS really difficult. When I was the one developing Algo Expert, my company, and writing all the CSS, doing all the, the design, I would hit my head against the wall so many times, really frustrated that I couldn't get a seemingly simple thing working. By the way, if you're a software engineer preparing for technical interviews, do check out my company, Algo Expert. Go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM for a discount on the platform. But, 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 I'm actually here to tell you that I don't think CSS is really that hard. Even though I bet you that over 70% of software engineers disagree with me, even though I used to disagree with the statement, I actually don't think that it's really that hard. And I'm gonna tell you what made me realize this recently. And it's the simple fact that I think people, myself included, don't learn CSS properly. In fact, I think that they don't even take the time to really learn CSS. And I realized this a few months ago when I was reviewing the CSS crash course that we have on our new front-end expert offering on Algo Expert, which is like a front-end interview prep product. I was reviewing the CSS crash course videos and I remember feeling almost embarrassed that as a software engineer with almost five years of work experience now, most of which has been spent on the front-end, a lot of the concepts that Connor, our friend and expert creator, was teaching in these videos were things that I just had never really like fully grasped. And suddenly here I was watching these videos being like, whoa, like I get it now. This is how the Flexbox works. This is how, you know, positioning works. This is how you center a div. As much as centering a div is a meme at this point, like I was finally like, oh, these are all the different ways you can do it. And so it got me thinking, why did I never really take the time to learn CSS properly, whether it be through some sort of video course like that one, or perhaps really sitting down and spending time reading the documentation of various CSS you know, properties and things like that. Because by the way, if you do do that, read the documentation, for example, on, on MDN, you'll learn a lot as well if you take the time. And so it got me thinking, and I identified four characteristics of CSS that make it such that most software engineers, myself included, don't take the time to learn it properly. So the first characteristic is that I think CSS has a few CSS properties that are extremely simple, like trivial. They are self-explanatory. Things like color, background color, font size, or you know, arguably margin, although margin can get kind of complicated. But these are things where you, know, you change the background color from red to blue, or from one hex code to another, and you immediately see your output, and it just works as you would expect it to. Or margin, you know, if you put like margin top 100 pixels, most of the time, not always, but most of the time, you will see your element go down on the page 100 pixels. And so these very trivial properties are kind of seductive. They make you feel like everything else about CSS is going to be this simple. And so you just say, okay, I'm going to just jump head first. And whenever I run into a property, I'm going to add something that seems, you know, kind of uh, logical or like common sense. And so you get to a point where you have an element and you want to center it and you'll put something like, you know, position center or justify center. And you'll try all the different variations of properties where you could put the word center and none of them work. And that's when you start getting really frustrated. So don't get seduced or lured in by these few very simple properties. 
take the time to learn about the more difficult properties because they're not going to be the same as the simple ones. The second characteristic that I think makes CSS very prone to not being learned to the right way is the fact that CSS doesn't really share programming paradigms with any other language. Now, if you've learned JavaScript, for example, and then you decide to learn Python, you're going to be learning a lot of the same things, or rather, you're not going to have to relearn a bunch of programming fundamentals because in Python, you've got variables just like you do in JavaScript. You've got data structures, you've got you know loops and things like that, and they all kind of look the same, or you've got for loops, while loops. Maybe some languages will eliminate one or two keywords, but overall, they all kind of share the same programming paradigms, whereas CSS is very different. Even though there happens to be variables and even loops in CSS, believe it or not, but Overall, in CSS, you don't have those same programming paradigms. And what's more is that in CSS, it almost feels like there are no real paradigms, right? You've just got elements or classes or IDs and then properties for those elements, classes, or IDs. And so that seems very simple, very inviting. It doesn't really feel like you have to relearn a bunch of stuff because, you know, you're like, even though it doesn't share the same programming paradigms, doesn't seem like there's much to learn. And boom, you fall into the trap again of not learning things properly because you oversimplify what CSS is. Just because it looks like it doesn't have that many paradigms doesn't mean that it actually doesn't. There are a lot of invisible paradigms, things like you know stacking contexts and all that. So you have to take the time to learn it properly. Now, this brings me to the third characteristic of CSS that makes it very deceptive and tricky. It's the fact that with CSS, you have immediate output, right? you change the property in CSS and you immediately see the output in your browser. The output is very visual, or at least it can be very visual. So you kind of feel like you have the power to iterate very fast. You change one property, you see the output. You tweak it a little bit, you see the output, but you do not have any error traces, right? You don't have any errors in CSS. So for example, if you try to center a div and you do something like, I don't know, justify content center, and that's the only thing you do, and your thing doesn't get centered, you're not going to get an error that tells you, you know, cannot call justify content center when you don't have blah, 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 or cannot center an element that is positioned, uh, you know, absolutely. I'm making stuff up at this point. Don't, don't like take what I'm saying as like, Correct CSS, but you get the idea. You don't have these error traces. And on top of that, you have this immediate output that really invites you to iterate super fast. And so at least if you're like me, what you end up doing is you just spend like 25 minutes changing properties in CSS until one of them works, until one of them does what you want it to do. It's a very frustrating. You feel like you're hitting the, your head against the wall. And you don't really learn anything because eventually you find the right thing, but that might not be the best way to accomplish what you were supposed to accomplish. Or you might not understand why it suddenly works. Like, especially with centering a div, I just remember in the early days when I was you know, developing things like Algo Expert, I would finally get that div to be centered, but I didn't really get why it had worked. You know, I had tried like five billion different property combinations and finally it works. And I'm like, wait, is this because I put a display block, or is it because I put position absolute? Is it because of the margin zero auto? And you just don't know. So you gotta take the time to learn it properly. The fourth and final characteristic that is very tricky about CSS, and that again, really emphasizes the fact that you should learn it properly, is the fact that a lot of things in CSS, like properties and, and uh, combinations of properties, have invisible downstream effects. In other words, you will do them and things will look good on your page. For example, you know, your elements will be positioned where you want them to be positioned. Maybe they will be, you know, all the way to the right of your page or all the way to the bottom or whatever. But once you start adding more things to your page, more HTML, more CSS, the thing that you did previously is going to have effects on that and it's going to completely mess up your app. For example, you know, you have your element that goes all the way to the right of the page, but then you add another element and then that other element is like completely messed up and is not where it's supposed to be. It's suddenly like to the left of the page and like hugging the top and you have no idea why it's doing that. And you know, you're super frustrated and you go on LinkedIn and you say, I hate CSS and 3000 people upvote your post. 
So that is, again, a reason to take the time to properly learn what CSS properties do, how they should be used, why is it that if you, you know, start positioning all your elements absolutely and adding things like top, left, right, bottom positions, why is it that you're going to start having a messy, you know, CSS layout because everything's going to start to be uh, messed up once you start resizing your screens and all that? You have to take the time to learn it properly. Once again, I do actually firmly believe that CSS isn't that hard if you learn it properly. For example, that CSS crash course on Front Expert, for me, a lot of the videos really made me feel like this, this pleasant embarrassment of like, okay, I didn't know this that well, but now I feel like it finally clicked. And I swear that you will find yourself, you know, like a new power. You will become a CSS expert if you learn it properly and you will no longer be one of those people who says CSS is hard. Hopefully you found this video helpful, informative. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form written content. Instagram if you like pictures and I will see you in the next video.